Okay, so let's get started. Okay, up first we have from Robin, Justin Crandall. Here we go. So if you let's use this one. Okay, now give me a second. Once uh, let me set the timer. <laughs> is there a clock running? <laughs> Do I need to change the lines? Oh, is this it? There we go. Technology. All right, we ready? That looks like my intro. Does that count as part of my five minutes? All right, hi, my name is Justin Cranell. I'm the co founder and CEO of Robin. Um, you may ask, what is Robin? So Robin is bringing modern convenience to the $70 billion lawn care industry. Right, and so if any of you have, <coughs> excuse me, tried to find lawn care anytime recently, uh, your experience probably goes something like this. You make three or four phone calls. Maybe one of these guys gives you a call back. He says, oh yeah, I can be over there on Thursday. I'll take a look and then I'll give you a price. Do I wait two days for him to show up and get a price? Do I call another guy over to give me a quote? Right? And then I need to pay with cash or checks left under a doormat. Literally, I don't even know where my checkbook is anymore, but this is the one thing that I'm still expected to write a check for. And in communication, generally, there's either a language barrier or these guys tend to be owner operators. They're out in the field. They're busy. They're not sitting there by their email waiting for their phone to ring or on a live chat line. And so as a customer, what we wanted to create was an experience that is very modern, very Uber-like. Go to a website, enter your address, get an instant quote, schedule my service, enter my, pay my payment info, a credit card or debit card, and that's it. My lawn is on autopilot. After every service, we notify you, say, hey, how did we do? Let us know. Right? Actual feedback given to our crews um, and a chance to actually influence the way your lawn is cared for. So we started, we're very much, you know, we're, we're family guys, we don't have time to mow the lawn anymore, we outsourced this problem. We started very much from the consumer standpoint. But what's been very, very interesting to us over the last year is that actually the greater pain is on the provider side. There are 90,000 registered lawn care businesses in the US, 300,000 independent contractors. Most of these are very, very small companies. These guys work extremely hard, but they are not business people in many cases. They're not good at marketing and customer acquisition. Communication is a challenge, either because literally they have language barriers or they are too busy to communicate. And then interestingly, the thing that's a pain to me as a customer of having to pay with cash or checks is a pain to the provider as well because he's writing off, writing off anywhere from five to even nine, 10% of his revenue is uncollectible every month. Right? And so what we do is we give these guys high quality jobs. We locate them near their existing jobs so they can actually get more mowing done every day with the same crew, so more profit per day. Right? We've literally changed the game for some of these people, starting with a 17-year-old kid uh, and his 15-year-old brother who mowed lawns for us in McKinney last year. Uh, another guy, Norma and Jose, a husband and wife team in Houston, started with us last year. They had five or 10 of their own lawns. They just started their business doing it part-time. They now mow full-time, do 80 lawns a week, and we provide about 70% of that. They went and bought a zero-turn mower. They're literally changing their lives based on the jobs and the help that we're giving them around this. Thank you. So it feels good, right? And, and we're excited about what we're doing, but there's a great business here as well. So we launched the business about 14, 15 months ago. Uh, we have acquired more than 5,000 paying customers. We've done more than 40,000 lawn care jobs in just the last year, which tells you that most people are coming back. This is not a one-time type of experience. It's something that people come back and we do it every week or every other week. And so um, from a billing standpoint, in just about four months, we hit a seven-figure revenue run rate. And this March has been chaos. We've more than doubled it in the first month of the year. We hate rain. Rain is <laughs> it's great. It makes the grass grow. But if you imagine running a factory that you have planned for six days a week, and then four or five of those days get washed out, it's a little bit of a challenge, but it's a good problem to have when we have that many customers and that many lawns to mow. And, and I think our customer satisfaction shows up in our retention rate. So for every 100 customers that sign up for a first mowing with Robin, 92 of them come back for a second visit, and 75 of them make it through six. And then after that, our churn falls to almost nothing. So our tagline is put your lawn on autopilot, and that appears to be what happens after that sixth visit. 
from a team standpoint, so my background is in startups, primarily B2B and running sales teams. I was with a company called Bizarre Voice out of Austin from 25 people to about 750 people in three years. Got to go launch the European headquarters for that company. My co-founder, Bart Lamont, is a military veteran who's also uh, been part of two gubernatorial campaigns in Indiana and great from the operations standpoint. And then many of you have probably heard of Dialexa. Uh, they founded a company here called Vinley that raised about six and a half million dollars for that company. Uh, they do all the design and development side and they're actually co-founders in Robin with us. So our tagline is put your lawn on autopilot, but we like to say more of the no more pain in the grass. So go get, go get your $15 mowing. That code is valid as of right now. Thank you. All right, that was great. How about some questions? How do you scale? So scaling actually hasn't been as much of a challenge as I thought. We're in Houston, Austin, and Dallas, and we haven't even been to Houston, right? So we're able to actually launch these cities remotely and manage them all with a fairly small team here in Dallas. We're six full-time employees and a staff of kind of four or five interns managing that volume of jobs. Who pays for the service? Uh, do, do, they, do the lawnmowers pay for it or the homeowners? The homeowners paying. So it's very much like an Uber type experience where I sign up, I pay the bill, and then we subcontract and pay the, the independent contractors. So right now it's only a website. We do have an iOS app, but we actually launched it more to test acquisition than as a real channel at this point. Um, so it's all mobile web, can be accessed from any device. Amazingly though, people do still want to call us on the phone. Initially we wanted everybody to go to the website, but the reality is that we have to staff phones, usually for the first couple of visits, and then people are like, all right, I trust you guys, we've got this on, on autopilot. Yeah, very well. How do you market to and find the providers? So the provider side's interesting. You know, in some ways it's fish in a barrel because you can go to Yelp, you can go to Angie's List, you can look at all the places these guys are advertising. Um, and so we find our initial batch of providers that way. But really, you know, we like the smaller guys. The 17-year-old kid read an article about us in the Dallas Morning News. And so he chatted into our website and said, how old do you have to be to mow lawns for Robin? And I literally thought a competitor was trying to catch us or something. <laughs> I had to go look up the Texas laws to make sure. And he's like, my 15-year-old brother wants to do it too. Eh, <laughs> turns out we're okay. Yeah. So it, it's a, you know, we start off with very much a proactive reach out to folks where they are. But you can use Craigslist, right? We're out in the neighborhoods looking for, for those smaller crews that maybe are not online yet. Uh, based on your, sorry, over here. Based on your uh, customer retention, mm -hmm. can you talk about why the eight out of the 100 customers have left and what keeps the 92 out of 100 staying? Yep. Some portion of it is we're aggressive with our marketing. We give away, like you can, um, you know, here, you just saw, you can get a $15 first mowing. We're gonna lose on that. And some people just look at it and go, man, I can take a day off, right? For 15 bucks and I have somebody mow my lawn. Um, in some cases, We'll, we'll get misset expectations, right? Where a customer's expecting a full service, you're gonna trim the shrubs, you're gonna clean up the leaves and everything for the low, low mowing price. We do offer all of those services, but not for the basic mowing type of price. And, and then there's, there's human error elements. And that's something that we're working on probably more than anything else where, you know, the customer asks us to mow the grass out by the alleyway and the crew just forgets to do it, just like crews in general do now. And so we use, um, we use an app, we use the website to prompt them with property notes and make sure that, yeah, we get all of the details that that customer is asking for. But it is very much a human business, right? It's not perfect, but the quality of our crews is much higher than what you would find just going out on your own, right? Because we have the data back from customers we're seeing the ratings and reviews from them, and we're weeding out the crews that are not doing a great job. So at the beginning, you mentioned the process of estimation where you get somebody there, you maybe wait two days, you gotta decide, do I also get another estimate in the meantime? Mm -hmm. and, and then a little later in the presentation, you mentioned a weekly and then bi-weekly price. 
What is the estimation process now with your application? Yeah, so we're primarily looking at the size of the property, but there are various factors. If you get a large one-story home footprint or a very large pool in the back, that can change it a little bit. So, I mean, we're basically using property tax data. Size of the property, size of the home, whether there's a pool, there's all kinds of things that are listed in that information. So you can easily kind of figure out, well, this is roughly what this looks like. And it's, it's right probably 95 to 97% of the time. And usually when it's wrong, we call the customer and go, hey, we missed. And they go, yeah, that did seem a little low to me. <laughs> so Justin, when um, you know, you've got some people that are you know, looking at different places to get their lawn mowed and someone hits your website and then you go, gosh, it's two in the morning and they know they need their lawn mowed. How do you know they were there? Does that mean I don't have to answer that one? <laughs> you guys can touch base after, uh, after the show. All right. That was a good question, but it was a little slow coming out. You gotta speed it up a little bit. <laughs> 